water, earth, fire, air. Nothing got me more excited than to hear those four words when I was a kid. Avatar The Last Airbender, one of the best series that Nickelodeon has ever put out between its storytelling, its characters, and the good old fashioned hero's journey to rise up and become what you know you need to be, got followed up by a series that did not receive equal praise, got fought by the studios, got fought by a lot of fans, but yet the showrunners were trying to do something. They were trying to make a philosophical point, a compare and contrast to the first series, something that I think most of the audience missed. And because this is being missed, The Legend of Korra isn't looked upon as highly as it should be. Let's get into the discussion. And like the cycle of the seasons, the cycle of the Avatar began anew. So, Aang didn't want to be the Avatar. No. But the world wanted him. Korra wanted to be the Avatar, but the world didn't care. Indeed. Uh, there's the, the idea that I love that so many people I think missed when it comes to the legend of Korra, and probably why I appreciate the show more, is the philosophical point of in, in Aang's world, the world that he lived in, we had people who said that as long as you believe in the Avatar, he will be there for you, he'll come through for you. Mm -hmm. Whereas it seemed like in you know the, the later world that Korra lived in, people said, but what has the Avatar done for me lately? Indeed. Okay, you're the Avatar, what does that mean? And like you saw that when she went for the pro bending circuit, is they're just like, oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're on this team. They didn't care. No, they didn't. And so, it, no, it's a very interesting, and that's also a uh, interesting counterpoint for just you know different uh, philosophical doctrines in general. Where it's the more you start to see progress and technological advancement, the more the old ways kind of start to die off. And you saw that very much, you know, in juxtaposition compared to the two series. You know, the hope and the prayer for the Avatar to return to save them from the war to a you know, society that is at peace and has technology and luxury. And so they had cars. Yeah. And so they're sitting there going, okay, and why should I care? We don't need you to save us from this impending army anymore, so what good are you? Well, and, and you really very much saw this idea that 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 bending was the evil keeping the the people oppressed. Yes. And so the ultimate bender would obviously be the ultimate oppressor. And again, the religious context there, whereas you know people, let's just use the the, the world as it is as it stands now. But the religious con, the, the I guess the religious subtext there, is that you know uh, the belief in God carried people through many many generations and many worlds. But once technology and People's freedom of movement came around, freedom of expression, freedom of all this came around. Yeah. Tech, you know, once all that came around, you know, it kind of became this idea that, well, the, the old religion was the suppression of us. The old religion yeah. kept us put down. And very much you saw this personified in Korra where that she was, she was not an oppressor. She just, she, she had this idea that she had to bring peace to the people, but how do you bring peace to a people that kind of already have achieved some sort of a societal Indeed. peace? And you Not know, to say that they didn't have crime or anything, but most... But, but they know. also they kind of had them fairly well in hand, too. They didn't need the Avatar to go be, you know, police chief, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, th these are jobs that are already filled. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't need your help, Avatar. Well, we got it, and and you see the, and then you see the politicians try to use the avatar. Oh, indeed, because for political points, you know, trying to use you know God or Jesus for political points, so indeed. to speak, and you and you see a lot of this, and to see it personified in a series where a character is going, no, but 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 that's I'm not a politician, I'm not here for political gain, and but the world at the same time doesn't want her, and so really the only thing to use that that old religion for was for politics, was for. And, and, and that's one of the things that I think so many people missed in The Legend of Korra. Yeah. That I, I picked up on almost immediately, but I was also an adult when I watched it, which it came yeah. out when I was an adult. Yeah. And, and, and so, I mean, I, I had already had, uh, I, I, I'd already had one kid by the time the series started, and I had two kids by the time it ended. the series was ended. And so, Whereas I was in my early 20s by, it, by the time I even got around to watching it. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and so, but, the, but the, again, that subtext there, this idea that, you know, 
Aang had a very, very simple journey. And a lot of people may, well, no, but look at all the crap. Well, no, but, but, but when it looks story, narrative, you know, writing. It's an archetype. It's, it's the an archetype. Story. It's the hero's journey. And, you saw, and they're, you know, beat, uh, you know, the general plot beats. There's not much difference between what happens no. to Aang to Luke Skywalker. No, no, there's really not. There's a person, you know, or I, I would compare Aang's journey more to Aragorn from... The Lord of the Rings movies. How so? You've got an oppressive, tyrannical government that's trying to oppress the people, and one <laughs> young lost kid has to rise up, even though he has an ancient uh, heritage. Yeah. To go defeat, he gets a little dinged up uh. all the way <laughs> after facing down, you know, somebody tied to that heritage, and yeah. then you know he has yeah, to no. rise up. No, no parallels. <laughs> no, parallels. No, no parallels. No parallels. No parallels. <laughs> 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 this, I'm not knocking the last Airbender here, but that's no, what I mean by no, its but, archetype. But, 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 but here's the here's the thing. Here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing. Is that I, I've got to I, I have to say this is that obviously uh, the Legend of Korra would not exist without the last no. Airbender. And, but but the show writers and and directors and runners they were they were pushing for something in the Legend of Korra that got missed by the general audience. And it was this deeper philosophical well, look at the world. Well, because they already had the world established, right? And you know, that's one thing I can give the last emitters. They established the world very well. The, oh my god, hugely well. And so, but then what Korra's, you know, when they went back to write the legend of Korra, they took they looked at what they had built and said, Okay, let's go deeper. Not bigger, but deeper. Yes. And that's why we saw the spirit, you know, realm, the uh, the origin of the Avatar. Which I which were yeah. some of my favorite episodes. I think it was two episodes or three episodes yeah. or something. Some of my favorite episodes to go, but oh my god. That's the origin of the and so you go real deep into what it, and I love those uh, world building aspects and those deep lore aspects uh, that they go into. And then you tie that in with the you know, that is another big religious overtone, and that's all of season two is the spirits versus the mundane. Yes. Why do we need the spirits? We've and they're actually dangerous. This is these are not inherently you know safe beings to be around. Uh, there was the face stealer. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, so these are not Co all co co the face yes, yeah. yeah. And so Which, these are very dangerous beings, and um, there there are some that are at least. And so having that, but that juxtaposition is that there is bad with spirituality, but there's also good. And how do you balance it? Mm -hmm. And that was the whole point of season two: is I am the bridge between the you know the living and the spirit, and Kor really had to kind of learn how to navigate that. Well, and Aang never had to figure out how to be the bridge between the spirit world and the 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 human world. He just had to bring peace. Yes, he and, was... and it's very much just a, again the the hero's archetype. You go, you beat mm -hmm. the bad guy. You once the bad guy is beaten, there's peace in the world, and that's very much how. The last Airbender ended, and even when you, uh, they touched on a couple of the struggles, but it was more political struggles. Yeah. In the Legend of Korra, that Aang and and uh, and Sokka and all of them had to deal with, but it was very much it it, it wasn't this that this this crisis of faith, this Indeed. crisis of 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 self identification that Korra did, and that is something that spoke to me in the Legend of Korra oh, that so many people miss. Oh, I know, especially, and this is, uh, I think, something that a lot of people overlook is the um, the villain of season three, and I forget his name. I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. I uh, yeah, the, no, the the essentially the guy who was granted airbending. Yeah. Which which think about this. Think about this parallel in season two. She does the spirit thing, which was, you know, she does the big avatar fight against, you know, Rava yeah. versus, you know, and then they do the clash. But then after that, more airbenders came. And so the reason that that guy could airbend was because she made a decision. And yes. never created an evil because of his own decisions. No. And something like that. He only like had that, to deal with the evil that was there. Yeah. He dealt with the evil that was there. He didn't have to deal with the evil that he could create from doing something that he thought was good. Because although she may have thought this idea was this was the good and righteous thing to do, from it came consequences. And mm -hmm. the consequences were a villain that brought this headstrong, bullheaded, just unbelievably powerful character to their knees. Because not only, because not only did this character, you know, break her down mentally and spiritually, but God, and I wish I could remember his name, but the, uh, I, I should have looked his name up before we did this. Yeah. But he also brought her to her knees physically and in her power and almost killed her. Yeah. And something like that, I, I, I love seeing that even though you, you, do, you do something good, it's kind of that no good deed goes unpunished, Indeed. right? Indeed. And, and they really touched on that. 
The Last Airbender never touched on a subject like that. They never, they never grasped that feeling of that deeper emotional conflict. Is that? But I did this good thing. Why am I being punished, punished for it? Indeed. And to see her really, you know, have to come to terms with that, especially that for however brief a time, he really did fly. He did. He did. Well, and it was after his, I mean, it was after, you know, she was a combustion bender and they wrapped the metal around her head. Yeah. And she kind of blew herself up, you know, yeah. which was a dark scene, by the way, for yeah. Nickelodeon. Yeah. Because yeah. you actually kind of saw the poof of smoke and <laughs> yeah. you're like, ooh. Ooh. And he goes... I have to let go of all, you know, and he recites the poem from that ancient airbender, and he says, I have to let go, you know, all of my worldly attachments, and he falls off the back of the mountain and then flies. Yes, it's not and something then, you see very often. Uh, An evil uh, character achieving peace. peace. No. Inner peace. Inner In, peace. Inner peace. Yeah. And it's it's this idea that to let go of that which binds you to the world and an evil man achieving an inner self peace that he has nothing else tying him to the world and so mm -hmm. thusly can fly and be lifted from the world the, and, and and to know that Korra because of her decision in season 2 created that man yes created that person gave him that power and she knows this that is an internal struggle that is this that it, that is something that that I'm sorry that it, that it wasn't done in the last Airbender. No, it was it really, all very cut and dry, and they also. I mean, don't gave, get me wrong. I love the last Airbender. Oh, that I know. Was, that's the whole reason I watched Korra. But one of Ang's biggest struggles mm. is he could not kill. And so, what does he do? He figures out a workaround. He takes away Ozai's Yeah, bending. yeah, that's right. That's right. They yeah. they did figure a workaround. There really was. I the the show writers did something with the Legend of Korra that I don't think a lot of people that being said, wanted. Having a, Thirteen-year-old kill a dude in cold blood. Well, is kind of well, but it, but it wasn't edgy cold for blood. A but, kid it, show, but, but it wasn't necessarily in cold blood because even all of the past avatars, they showed all the past avatars showing you've got to yeah. kill this guy, you've got to kill this guy. But the show writers gave him an out. They did. They did not give Korra an out, and in fact, Korra realized that she created. I, I swear, his name was Zahir. I that sounds that. like the right name, but anyway, I, we'll have to look it up after the show. Yeah, but. That sounds like, but Korra realizes she created this person. She gave it, well, maybe not created him, but gave him the power to do what he did. She enabled him. She enabled him. Indirectly, and, but and then, she did And not only him. did she enable him, but then after season three ends, she goes on this suffering. She's been poisoned. Not only, and, and then there was this representation mentally of them, physically. mentally, physically, spiritually, she was broken. She was, she was lost. She didn't, she had, she... A, a person who believed in herself, who was so bullheaded, I can do anything. Ask Toph, please do this for me. Take this metal out yeah. of me. They broke her down. They took a character. They took a character in Aang who was skittish and shy and built him up to be a strong character. And they did the exact opposite, opposite. with Korra. And they said, let's take this strong character and break her down to a character who is broken and so she can find herself. And that is, and that there, I, I've, I've definitely gone through moments of that in my life, and maybe that's why, as an adult, you kind of appreciate that sort it, of. It's this. Well, it's a, it's a very different outlook, right? The Last Airbender was very much for the young set, think eight through fourteen. Oh, roughly. it was about where I watched it. Yeah, yeah, target audience is what I'm going for here. Whereas Cora was written to be ages sixteen and beyond. And so it's a different sort of storytelling because I think the writers had a lot more faith in the maturity and age of their audience at that point because they are no longer kids. They don't have that kid outlook of I just do the right thing, I beat the bad guy, and everything's okay. Mm -hmm. Now you realize, oh, just because I do everything okay or I'm this figure of power does not mean I'm accepted, does not mean the world is looking for my help, does not mean that if I do good things that they won't have dire consequences. No, and that and that was something, like I said, I mean, I, I had, I mean... By the time I was watching The Legend of Korra, I'd already had a child. Yeah. I mean, she was a baby. But you'd still... You know, she's eight years old now, but she yeah. was a baby then. And by the time I think I, I, fi I finally had finished, or by the time I d got done with it, I had, uh, I, I had two kids. Yeah. And, and seeing this internal struggle, I'm in a relationship. I realize that things that I might do that are good, you know, might not be the best for the relationships. Things that, you know, well, indeed. What's good things for your I do job as a father might, might, yeah, might not be good. What's good for your good, job might not be good for, for the, the relationship. What's good for know, the relationship might not there, be good for the there, kid. There was, a, there were, there were, there was constant so, balance. Well, there, there was complexity yeah. to the legend of Korra that I think so many 
people didn't want to do. And that's why people focus on like the BS relationship crap. Oh, I know. And that drives me nuts. That, that, I don't care. I don't care who <laughs> Korra is with because that does not define Korra. No. Korra is defined by the trials and tribulations and the successes of those trials and tribulations. And people just missed it. They just oh, missed it. And the, the you know relationships that were there are more than just who she wants to date. It's... You know, the friends supporting her, the advisors like Tenzin that keep, you know, trying to guide her on along the path of wisdom. Even Zuko shows up to give some, you know, decent advice. At well, one and point. she even meets on Iroh the in the a... spirit world, which, by the way, great episode with oh, Iroh. Yeah, Any episode with Iroh, Iroh, Iroh is just. But can I just say how badass it was that, you know, Zuko comes in as the former Fire Lord on the back like of a dragon of a dragon <laughs> that was. But but no, and there were uh, and, and what I love about it is that is that. You know, and even Zuko spoke of moments where Aang wasn't so sure of himself. But those were moments in between The Last Airbender and, and Korra. We never got and to that see was them. The whole, that was the whole point of Korra, is even though you're unsure of yourself, you take the guidance and the wisdom that your friends, your family, and the world have to offer you, and you do the best that you can. And guess what? Sometimes the best that you can do... Isn't enough. Isn't enough, or it might have a consequence, but it's what you can... But you can keep moving, moving forward... forward. And that yeah. was that was something that there were there was some of that in the last Airbender, but there was not. And but and, and the last ever the, the fact of the matter is, the last ever would not have been as successful had it done the things that Korra did. No, and I'm not trying to argue that the last Airbender is a BS show because the fact of the matter is, is I I still watch it as an adult. I get my kids to watch it with me. Oh, I know. And 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 my wife and I were just like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is brilliant. It's very well done. I the only thing I've ever said about it is it's a very archetypal story. Archetypal it, it, story. It, it is. It is. But there there was so much good in that. And then for those guys to go, let's take what we have, but let's go deeper. Deeper. And so many people go, well, some of the episodes didn't work. Well, yeah, no, but some of the episodes in every show don't work, but and people focus on that so much because I think that people there's a sitcom did, that did, had a people, pineapple they never wanted to explain either, but the pe people <laughs> so. didn't want to go into the deeper meaning of the Legend of Korra, and I think that I think that the show writers overestimated the ability of the audience to want to go deeper, not the ability of the audience to go deeper, but the audience didn't want to go deeper. They wanted another hero's journey. Yeah, and. And they in wanted retros, this, and because I because I've watched a lot of people say, "Oh, Korra's good, Korra's bad." This is a topic for another time, and one that I know we'll get into eventually. But you know, if you already have a strong character, you've got to do something. Otherwise, they just stay a strong character. There's no growth there. And what Korra did is they grew the character very well. Yeah. And so when you have somebody that strong, that bullheaded, sometimes the only way to grow is to go down a bit. To, to have get to, knocked down yeah, a peg, you yeah. know, when you're on that pedestal, how about you get off your pedestal and see what the world is like? Yeah, indeed. Guess what? You're not going to win every fight. No. You're not going to be right in every situation. Not every decision that you make is going to have a good outcome. Even if you do it with the best intentions. Yes. And so it's a lot. It's a much deeper show written for an older audience, and I think that got missed. They wanted Avatar 2, not Korra. If I agree. Yeah. No, and I, I think that that's completely valid. And I think that that's something that... I, it just it bothers me because, you know, because because I, I love watching reviews and film reviews and show yeah. reviews. And and I see so many people like, well, you know, The Legend of Korra just what... And, and they talk about episodes. Not, like, well, this character wasn't as good. This show had these characters. This show had those characters. And I'm like... It, 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 it did, but but you're missing so much of the point is because the point the show was so focused on Korra. I know, and, and a lot of the internal struggle. A lot of the complaints I've heard of have been about Tenzin is that people are just very interested in Aang's son. But Tenzin isn't there to be the star of the show. He's there as a moral support and a guide for uh, Korra, as well as well, being the one that teaches her airbending. And, and so let's talk about Tenzin for a second. There yeah. was an episode where... Where Tenzin was fondly thinking of his dad and all these things mm -hmm. that his dad did with him. And his brother and sister was like, yeah, we weren't there. Like, dad loved you because you were the airbender. Yeah. Dad chose you because you were his special little airbender. We weren't. Yeah, we, we were just the And normies. you start to realize... Yeah. Dad wasn't a perfect father. No, or, 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 or Aang wasn't a perfect father. Aang had his faults. And nobody wanted to focus on that. Well, it was Aang saw the death of his entire people. So for him to have a son that's an airbender would have been very special to him. 
Yeah. And, and so, they went on vacations, but the other two got left out. You know, Boomy and uh, uh, oh, his sister. Yeah, his oh, sister. I the sister, which I loved her. I loved the yeah. character. I can't remember. But but, but they're just like, you know, Tenzin, you were dad's favorite. And Tenzin obviously had the struggles. Very of, bullheaded. No, dad loved us all. And we're like, we're not saying he didn't love us all, but he paid special attention to and you. And then you also saw Tenzin struggle with being Aang's son, especially as an adult. Aang did all these things mm -hmm. as a kid, and now as an adult, Tenzin's sitting there going, uh... And, and now he has to train the next Avatar. And you see that a lot with a lot of very um, famous or uh, powerful parents. I mean, you think about... You know, anybody who has a son and they're like, you know, a naval admiral or, a, you know, general in the army or something. Yeah. You know, I mean, go, you know, talk to Eisenhower's kid and see how he lived up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, and, 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 and so that's, a, but, you know, obviously these series are so intertwined. We do mention Last Airbender a lot, but those were all themes explored in the legend of Korra. Yeah. Yeah. The, this, the internal struggle, the, the idea that choices don't always work out the way that you think that they're, they're going to. That sometimes, even with the best of intentions, you can create the greatest evil in your life. Oh, indeed. Although you might do something that you think is the most righteous thing to do, you might create the own that you might through that choice, you might create the very thing that, that brings you down, that destroys you, that destroys who you are. And these are and and so many themes that people just overlooked, and they wanted to focus on some of the bad episodes, some of the. Some of the how the characters weren't written as well, and those are flaws with the show. Korra oh. is not a perfect show. No, it is not. And also, th this is another thing the internet just loves to fixate on. I swear to God, because it's mostly run by teenagers, is who she's gonna date. And it's just like nobody cares. Nobody That's cares. not the point of the show. You know what? You are not defined by your relationships. You are defined by how you deal with what the world throws at you mm -hmm. and how you grow from those things. And also what's funny is by doing just that, you get strong relationships in the end. Because you, you are your own person at you, that point. You You're not I, dependent on the relationship to define you. You are now your own person and therefore you can be your own person when you do have relationships, whether they're just friendships or not. I think we're out of time. I think we're out of time. So. And we have to do this, otherwise yeah. we will be here. You've seen how much we can go in just 20 minutes. We'd be here for another yeah, hour. Yeah, we'd be here for us. another hour. But the, So that's the time limit on that. And those are our thoughts on the Legend of Korra and why there are so many elements of the Legend of Korra that were that were better than uh, The Last Airbender. So, or at least underappreciated, if nothing else. Oh my god, they were yeah. hugely underappreciated. So we're going to sign off, guys, and we look forward to seeing you on our next discussion, which I believe is Bioshock. Yes. That's going to be a fun one. All right. Looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Thank you all so much for watching A Drink With Crazy. We have been having conversations like this for years, and we are so happy to include all of you in them. Don't forget to comment down below with your thoughts on all of our videos to tell us what you guys think, how we're wrong, how we might be right, or just differing opinions. We always love to hear that. The two biggest things you guys can do to help this channel grow is to share it with all of your friends and subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of all of our upcoming videos. We really do hope that you guys like some of the deep dives and some of the non-deep dives that we do into the various different forms of pop culture. And we look forward to seeing you guys in future videos and live streams and everything involved with A Drink With Crazy. So until next time, we look forward to seeing you and we appreciate all of your support.